Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you 10 ways that you can make Minecraft look absolutely amazing. There should be something in here for just about everyone, so if you don't like how one of these particular setups look, just go ahead and skip to the next one, and I'm sure you will enjoy at least one of them. And keep in mind you're gonna have to install Optifine in order to get literally any of these to work. And just like always, if you'd like to download any of this, you can find it all in the description below. And anyways, let's go ahead and get into the video. Alright, so to start things off, we're going to be doing easily the most simple thing on this list, but it does still make the visuals quite a bit better. What you're going to need to do is go into Optifine's shader settings, then select the internal shader and increase render quality to 2.0. And this is going to give you a much crisper, just more beautiful image when you're playing the game, especially if you're playing at a lower resolution. This is going to help so much, trust me. Here I'll give a little comparison of what it looks like before and after with this tweak enabled. And as you can see, the image just looks far better. This shouldn't be all all that intensive on your computer either. You'll probably lose some FPS, but it won't be that much. But do keep in mind, if you try this with an actual shader, you will definitely be losing some FPS. But yeah, this is going to be a great tweak to do if you're not actually looking to change how Minecraft looks, but just want to make it look a bit better. Next up, we're going to be using a combination of Silder's Enhanced Default and the Vanilla PBR Resource Pack. This is also going to have some pretty vanilla-friendly visuals, although it's definitely adding a few more things than the previous tweak. Once the shader's loaded, go ahead and select Shader Options and enter the anti-aliasing section, and I've personally turned on TAA because I think the visual boost is worth losing a bit of performance, but this is really up to you. After this, enter the normal map section and enable RP support. This is going to be something that we will need to do if you want to use the resource pack that I'm going to be installing next. The rest of the shader settings are up to you. This shader in particular has a lot of customization available, so go crazy. But once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and load the vanilla PBR resource pack. And this keeps the vanilla textures in the game, however, it allows them to have kind of a 3D effect. And I personally really like how this looks. It just makes the textures feel a bit more tangible, if that makes sense. And if you'd like to take this a step further, you can go ahead and try the Vanilla Plus shader. And this one has a pretty similar visuals to the Silder's Enhanced Default shader, although it is a bit nicer looking. Just make sure in this shader settings you enable Lab PBR support. Now for our next setup, we're going to be using the Continuum 2.1 shader along with the Vanilla Accurate Resource Pack. And this is also one on this list that's going to look at least a bit vanilla friendly, although it looks absolutely amazing and it's going to be pretty tough on your computer too. Once you've got the shader loaded, navigate through the menu to surface settings to shadow settings and then enable soft shadows. Then head over to material settings and set parallax depth to 1.25. And finally inside of camera settings and then lens settings, we're going to be enabling depth of field. Now you should be good to go and man does this look incredible. The textures have a ridiculous amount of detail to them and they're 3D. All in all, this is just about as good as Minecraft can look, while still generally sticking to what the vanilla game looks like, although just a very much enhanced version of it. Alright, next up we're going to be doing one of my favorite graphics tweaks you can do for Minecraft. In fact, if you've watched some of my How to Turn Minecraft into Blank videos, you've probably seen this one before. What we're going to be doing is using Chalk Pick 13's shaders. You can use either version 8 or version 9, depending on what you prefer, and then you can select whichever quality preset you'd like. Once you have this shader loaded, go ahead and go into the shader settings and then select shading and then fog densities. Now we're going to be increasing atmospheric density anywhere from around 5 to 20. Really, it just depends on how much fog you'd like. A setting of 20 is going to give you practically impenetrable fog depending on the situation, where a setting like 5 will just be a nice medium amount of fog. As I said, this is one of my favorite graphics tweaks for Minecraft because it can just set some pretty amazing atmospheres for the game. Once you've activated this, if you'd like, you can even disable the day-night cycle and set the time to zero, and this will make it so it's always going to be very foggy outside. You don't have to do this, although do keep in mind that you're going to have the foggiest weather when it's early in the morning. Alright, for our next setup, we're going going to be using the bare bones resource pack along with the bare bones normals add-on plus the spooks bare bones add-on pack and we'll be using these three along with the simplicissimus shader and with this combination we're going to be doing a pretty good job of actually recreating the visuals you'll see from the minecraft trailers once you've activated the shader go ahead and enter shader settings then select lighting enable soft shadows and turn on normal map support next head over to the effects tab and turn on promo outline and now aside from i guess the terrain generation you should have some visual visuals that look pretty close to the trailers. Now, the reason I included the Spooks Bare Bones add-on is because without it, the sky is kind of broken with this resource pack when you use the shader. I don't know if this issue is just particularly applying to me, but regardless, it was happening and this was the fix that I had. 
And once again, if you'd like to change up the visuals a bit, you can go ahead and try the vanilla plus shader. This will actually give you better water to be honest, although the trees can have some weird glitchiness to them. Alright, next up we're going to be using Silder's Vibrant Shaders along with Snowy Terrain while it's snowing. It doesn't have to be snowing or snowy terrain, but this is where I believe it looks the absolute best. Once you've got to this point, head to the shader options, then depth of field, and enable depth of field distance blur, and then set blur view distance to 512. Now, in your game, you're going to want to set your weather to rain, and find yourself a nice snowy location, or even a custom map like this one. And the final result of this is truly just something for the eyes to behold. The setting is up there for me with the chalk picks fog, it just looks so amazing. And like I said, it doesn't have to be snowy or in a snowy biome, but this is just generally where I think it looks the best. Next up, we're going to be using a combination of the Conquest resource pack and U Shader. Conquest is one of my absolute favorite resource packs out there, because it just has so much detail to it, a solid chunk of of the blocks will blend together when placed next to each other, and many of the blocks have variants depending on where you place them. It's unbelievably detailed and feature loaded, and honestly that alone is worth placing it in this video, and in combination with the U shader it looks even better. I ended up selecting this shader in particular because it doesn't break anything in this resource pack and still looks really good. And in this shader settings I've actually gone ahead and went to atmosphere then clouds, set the altitude to 250, and then turned off planar clouds because I just don't think they look that good to be honest. Plus I've also decided disabled motion blur because it's motion blur. Alright, this next visual setup is probably the most unique one on this list. What we're gonna do is head back to the Silder's enhanced default shader, enter the miscellaneous section, and enable depth buffer. And this is gonna make it so most of the terrain is black while the air is white. And this gives a very, very interesting look to Minecraft. It doesn't necessarily look amazing like a bunch of the other things on this list, rather it just looks cool. It gives Minecraft a kind of dark atmosphere and could make it potentially pretty scary to play. Next up we're going to be using the Voyager shader. In the shader settings you're going to head to surface settings and then set world curvature to low. And what this is going to do is literally make your Minecraft world curve away from you. In my opinion this is a really cool effect and it's actually a great way to hide the edge of the world. In fact if you set the render distance to even like 12 you probably won't be able to see any of the chunks loading. If you find the effect to be simply just too strong, you can also just set it to too high if you'd like, and this will make the curvature of the world a bit more subtle. Alright, finally the last combination I'll be showing you guys today is the Patrick's Resource Pack along with the Sonic Ethers PTGI HRR Shader. This is a combination that I've actually made several dedicated videos to, and is truly that wonderful that it deserves to be on this list too. This shader and this resource pack were made for each other. Honestly, every time I load this up, I'm still shocked by how good it looks. Aside from the Minecraft blockiness of it, it looks like a next-gen game. I truly just can't say enough about how much I really love this combination. Now, in the shader settings, I would actually recommend clicking post-processing, then anti-aliasing, and turning off the do final FXAA. I think this gives a much cleaner image, at least at 1440p, which I play at. I'm not 100% sure if it'd look better at 1080p, but in my opinion, it just looks a lot better with this turned off. Alright, that's the end of this video, and if there's any other combinations of shaders, resource packs, or really whatever, go ahead and let me know and I'll test it out. Let me know what your favorite combination was in the comments below, and if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.